Does anyone come to DEF CON next month? One, nice. I'll be there as well. <laughs> This is during power hour, by the way, they're doing the left phase, left, right. If you look on uh, YouTube on crowd control, then you will see probably this, uh, this uh, video. All right, doors closed, let's, uh, let's get started. Um, so topics, uh, I'll introduce myself. I'll tell a bit about the background of the project, the key services that we used, the architecture behind it, and how eventually the parsing of audio is done and the, uh, the results of the project. So introduction, I'm Robert, I'm a technical director at MediaMox in the Hilversum office. And for the ones that don't know us, uh, we're a 8,000 uh, strong people worldwide company and we work for all the biggest brands uh, in the world. And our client is IET, which probably you have heard of at some point. Uh, they're famous for well, DEF CON, uh, just so the, the image from, uh, but also Mystery Land, uh, Sensation, Thunderdome. That's probably something that you like uh, in there. And in the background you see a maze, that's a nice audiovisual experience in Amsterdam, which you can still visit, highly recommended. So, a bit of background. Uh, last year we introduced uh, uh, also a MediaMonk project in QNAS Network. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone is using it here. Uh, Again, yeah, same, same guy, nice. Uh, it's, a, it's an app, but well, there's also a web version. It launched uh, June last year, right before DEF CON. And it's built on top of the IDT members project. I'm not sure who watched the session I did last year on the Drupal Jam, uh, the virtual Drupal Jam, but you can watch that if you like on, on YouTube. Uh, it offers free and paid memberships, and there's live and VOD content, so also the, the DEF CON will be broadcasted live uh, within the app. And there's over 500 hours of, uh, of live sets and, uh, and movies and, and shows on there that you can, uh, you can watch. And that's also one of the things that we needed to solve since there's a lot of live sets in the, uh, in the app. And uh, soon after the release, there were record labels asking like, okay, that's, that's really nice that you have there, but uh, we would like to have our fair share of income on the distribution of our music. Uh, so we needed to figure out a way on how to uh, have a fair model of uh, uh, how to pay money to the record labels for using broadcasting their music. So that was one thing we needed to tackle. And if we're going to look at uh, getting tracklists from live sets, we can also use that information to the user within the app. So that was a nice uh, a bonus thing that we're looking at. Um, you probably use Shazam at some point or SoundHout, it's a very useful tool, so if you, you are somewhere you think like, hey, this is a nice uh, piece of music, you just open your phone, uh, Shazam, and it will tell you what it is. It's very nice, but that doesn't work uh, from an API perspective, they don't offer anything like that, unfortunately. However, there's a tool called ACR Cloud, and uh, that's exactly doing what we needed. So you can set a sample there of audio, and it will tell you hopefully what kind of music is in there. So I took a first stab at it uh, uh, on, a local, on my local PC, so I took an MP3 file and I sliced it in smaller, in smaller segments. And um, I needed to do that because while ACR Cloud can detect audio, it, I cannot just throw a 60 minute live stream at it and it will tell me what exactly is in there. So, I needed to figure out how to do that, so I decided to slice up everything in smaller pieces, like 10-20 seconds of audio. And then uh, I would combine and parse all that data, and then the outcome would be a, a track list. But that was local, so now I needed to turn it into an actual project. And for that we used uh, a couple of key services. S3, who knows what S3 stands for? Care to make a guess? Uh, yeah, it's a storage. Uh, uh, storage pocket where you can store yeah, data. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what S3 itself stands for? Uh, 
No. Simple story, Terms. It's funny that everyone knows the, the term S3 is very common, but most people don't even know what it stands for. I think that's very funny. Um, but this is, this is an awesome service uh, where you can just store an enormous amount of data. It's very cheap and very secure. Uh, we also use Lambda for this project, but did anyone ever use this? It's uh, one nice. Uh, it's basically, uh, you're probably used to um, uh, writing code in your IDE and then you package it and then you upload it to the server that's pre-configured with PHP or something. Uh, but with Lambda you can just write a small piece of code and it will take input and you just return output. And the only thing you upload is that piece of code. And uh, by that you don't need to have servers that you maintain uh, or runtimes that you maintain. You just give that piece of code and that's it. And you can uh, build APIs with it but you can also trigger a piece of code when a file is uploaded, for instance, to S3. And there's many, many more things. You pay per use, so there's no continuous running servers, you just upload the code, and if it doesn't get executed, you don't pay anything. And step functions is a workflow service, and that's you can use that to tie functions together or create paths. It's like a like a state machine. There's also a very nice visual uh, editor for this nowadays. And DynamoDB, which is a database, a NoSQL database, which I've used for caching uh, data. So about the architecture. So I was looking at uh, making the M3 files smaller, like splitting it into segments. And, uh, well, that works fine locally. But um, there was a, a limit on S3. You cannot have more than 512 megabytes of temporary storage. And that would limit me because sometimes they do have live sets of over three hours. And then I, if I need to download the file and split it, uh, I, that but would, just wouldn't fit. A uh, few months later, after I built this tool, there was a, an update and it allows you to have 10 gigabytes of storage, so that was perfect. Uh, but still, I think the solution I came up with is a lot uh, more reliable. Uh, because I wanted to make a solution that is uh, well, reliable, fault tolerant, uh, also very cost effective, scalable, and uh, I wanted it to be fast. And that was not a client requirement, but I always think that if you develop something, yeah, you need to make it fun for yourself, it gives yourself an extra challenge. And so I wanted to make it super fast. And when I was working on the problem of, of slicing MP3, uh, I was remembering something from my childhood. I'm not sure uh, if, if anyone ever owned an MP3 player, uh, like, like 15 years ago. Uh, mine only had 32 megabytes of, of memory, which is nothing, of course. But I remember that if I have a live set, I just sliced it. So like I like the segment from 10 minutes to 15 minutes, and I just sliced it. And that's a very nice aspect of MP3, that you can just slice things, and it will still work. So I was thinking, if I split everything in 10 second segments, then I want to see if I can only get that 10 second segment from S3. And as it turns out, there is something called a range header, and you can, uh, if the service supports it, S3 does, but Apache and Nginx also support this, you can uh, request only specific segment of a file. So I did some calculations, and if I then looked at the bitrate of the MP3 file, uh, 192 kilobit uh, per second, uh, and I started uh, calculating the start endpoint and the end endpoint of the file, I knew exactly for uh, the byte range of the segment I was looking for. And uh, well, that works really well, Streak supports this. Um, so then the next thing I needed to define like what's my input to my state machine and the only thing I, I actually need is to have the bucket like where is the file located and the key of the file. So this would be the, the input that I need for the, uh, for the tool. Uh, optionally I can also already tell the tool what the bit rate is and what the duration is. So in this case it's 192 kilobyte, uh, the, the bit rate is 120, uh, 192 uh, KBPS and the duration is one hour, so this is in seconds. 
but it's optional. And also, again, to make things fun for myself, uh, what if it's not MP3? Uh, I, I just thought it was fun to also support uh, video files for this. So this is uh, half of the state machine. So let's start, just start at the top. Um, so if, if there's no bitrate defined, like I can pass it, but it's optional. So if it's not there, I can uh, I will download uh, the first megabyte of the MP3 file of the input file, and then see if I can using a tool called Media Info. Uh, it's a command line tool. I will just see if I can extract the bitrate from that first segment. Uh, if it turns out that it's not an MP3 file, uh, I will run it through Media Convert, and then I will transform it into an MP3 file. And then I also know the bitrate because I defined the bitrate myself. Uh, then the next step is to uh, calculate the duration. And I can calculate this easily because I have the bitrate. And from S3 I also can figure out what the total size of the file is without actually downloading it. And then I can just do a simple calculation and know how many seconds my, uh, my life set is. Then I calcula I'll calculate the amount of, uh, of, uh, of segments that I need, the amount of samples. So if I use 10 second samples and I have one hour, then I can easily calculate that it's 360 uh, samples that I need to do. And then action. Uh, and this is the fun part with the state machine. Uh, and I also wanted to make it fast, I told you. Uh, so then there's, in parallel, I can have many of those segments be identified at the same time. So currently I set a to parallelization factor of 20. So there's it does it 20 segments at the same time. Uh, so it downloads that small segment from S3, then it queries a shared cloud for the results, and it stores those in DynamoDB. And after that's all done, so let's say I've done 360 of those segments, it moves on to the next step, and that's the parsing step. And then I download all the results from the database, <coughs> then I parse the data, and uh, then I end up with my track list. Uh, which I also write as a JSON file to S3. And then if needed, I clean up temporary files, like if I created that MP3 file because it was a video, I will clean that up again. And then it's successful, or in the case, it, it, it could also be a failure. It doesn't happen a lot, um, but it could still happen. Uh, and in the end, I publish a event to event bridge, and this is mainly for monitoring purposes. So when an event uh, is failed, I can maybe trigger uh, an email, inform someone that it has failed. So then the parsing. Uh, raw data doesn't, doesn't work. Like I have a lot of intake from, uh, from ACR Cloud, but that's not what we need. We need to have a proper track list. So let's assume that I have five samples then every sample can have one, maybe even zero, one or multiple matches. And a match can contain, uh, it always contains an ACR Cloud ID, that's an internal ID that they use, but also the, uh, the name of the artist and the name of the track. And optionally there's also a record label and, and various kinds of IDs on our uh, ISRC, that's an internationally recognized uh, identifier for audio but also maybe YouTube ID or Spotify or DJ. So if we look at the samples again, it could be that um, for the samples that there are multiple of the same matches. So then I can link those together and define like, okay, this is a track. So now in this case, I have two, I've identified two separate tracks. So, but then uh, I wasn't quite there yet. Yeah, I need to do some kind of optimization. And uh, match boosting is one of them. So while the green one, the green match might occur more than once, uh, maybe it's not the best match for us because we prefer tracks that have more data in them. So like the yellow example that has an IRS, uh, ISRC and a Spotify ID. So that's more useful to us. So instead of having the most message, we uh, the most message matches we choose the best match based on the metadata that we receive. Uh, get removal. 
Uh, it could also happen that, uh, that there's a small kind of track in between. So that might be four minutes or something, then 10 seconds or something, and then four minutes again. Uh, and that's just noise, that 10 seconds in between. So I decided that if something is too short, a track is too short, uh, I will just remove it. And this can also happen if there's maybe no ID, if there's no match. And uh, that can, for instance, happen because with dance music is often mixed. And then if there's two tracks running at the same time, the, the HR cloud service doesn't know what to do with it and there's no matches. So what I did is, if there's a small gap, then I will just uh, link the tracks together. So I will remove the unknown part in the middle and I will make sure that it's nice and clean. Same with intros and outros, a bit similar. Usually at the beginning of a live set, uh, the MC is talking or there's uh, an introduction of the act uh, and that's sometimes a bit messy. So in that case, if it's less than like a minute, I just say like, this is the intro. And obviously the same happens at the end, that there could be an outro. Uh, what can also happen is that uh, it just doesn't recognize something for a couple of minutes. And, well, we call it a track ID. And uh, the, the, it would be funny if I would, not sure if you know the meme, but I could put the root sandstorm for every ID. Uh, but obviously it's more useful that if I actually mark it as an ID. So then in the track list, you would see track A, ID, track B, and then it would make more sense for a user. Obviously, it doesn't help for the record labels, but it's at least for a human, it's more visual. So, results. Um, this is a track list for Wild Styles at DEF CON 1 at home last year. And uh, this was a 100% <coughs> match. So, we could identify this live set for a full 100%. And overall, the result is that we have like 90% uh, match rate on everything so far on the whole catalog of, uh, of QNS network. And that also includes music or live sets from 10 years ago. So I think that is uh, done really well um, from the perspective of HR Cloud. And with the optimization techniques, usually it adds a couple of percent to the reliability. And uh, this was my uh, thing I liked most myself, I wanted to make it fast so I can, with using the state machine and the parallelization, I could identify a 60 minute live uh, set in under 30 seconds. And uh, it doesn't add any much value to the project, but I, I wanted to just make it fun for myself. So, and I learned a lot from it. Um, but if we go back to the two tasks that we had, uh, we need to figure out how we're actually going to make a fair model for this. And just having the track list is not good enough because it also depends on what music was actually watched by the user. So if we take a, a look at simplified web server logs or CDN logs, um, you can see that uh, this is a single log entry of watching someone watching a video. And the UUID would be the video ID. So now we know at least what track list is linked to this video. And the last part is the segment. And since well, we built QNS Network ourselves, we know that one segment is five seconds uh, of material. So having this information, you can uh, parse the web server logs and you know exactly what points in time were watched by users and how often. And you can link that to the track list information and then you know what tracks were actually watched by the users. And based on that information, you can define how much a record label should uh, receive. Also, the, uh, uh, giving more information to users, this is still a work in progress. Um, but since I already had that track list as JSON, it was very easy to also create a subtitle file for it, or WebVTT. So I could just create a small converter that takes in the JSON file and it converts it to the subtitle file and the player that we use, at least on web, uh, TO player, it supports this natively, so it's like chapter information. So if you hoover over the video on the timeline, it will already tell you what track is playing 
at that moment in time. So if you have your favorite track, you can just scroll in it and you can, uh, you can see when it's playing. Um, and this is also like we also are looking into options on having the crowd fill in the IDs, similar to what uh, some track list sites do, but that's, uh, that's something for the future. That's the end of it. Um, probably a lot of information. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Any questions? Yeah. Real nice project, though. I like it. Uh, my question is uh, what programming language did you use to write uh, the, the service function? Okay, the question is I'm not sure if I think it's being recorded. Uh, what programming language was used? Uh, I built this with Node.js. Everything is built with Node.js. Nice. Okay. More questions? You for a dog. Uh, you have now have increments of 10 seconds, I think, the slices. Do you have any ideas how to get uh, more uh, detail, like second interval? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, the, so the interval is now 10 seconds. Yeah. Uh, I started with 20. Uh, I, I eventually changed to 10 seconds. Uh, it didn't get much more reliable from that, but it was more about the um, the gap removal and such, so a lot of those kind of plugins that I wrote were a little bit more reliable, but on the actual actual identification with Asia Cloud didn't that matter that much actually. And I also looked in like, can I lower it to five seconds or maybe two seconds, but it, it, the overall uh, reliability didn't change much, so we kept it at 10 seconds. Also, then, of course, our client needs to pay for the re amount of requests we do to Asia Cloud, so uh, it's on their interest to have as uh, less calls as possible, uh, so we eventually settled on 10 second segments. Yeah. Uh, really cool project, thank you. So, uh, I'm just wondering, the ACR cloud, is that a proprietary service or is it uh, open source? Do you all use it? It's, uh, it's a, a software as a service, so you can uh, just sign up enter your credit card details and you can uh, you can start with it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's like Shazam, so you just send a, an MP3 sample to it and it will reply back with what's in there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned earlier uh, using a video. Uh, yeah. Did you encounter privacy uh, issues, concerns? What, what do you mean? Uh, privacy concerns uh, regarding uh, having people uh, you mean that the people in the video don't want to be in the video? Uh, well, that's more an uh, event organizer thing. Like if you buy a ticket to an event, you automatically agree with their terms that they can do filming on the, on the, on the location. So that's something that I didn't, I didn't need to worry about. So, uh, but yeah, if someone has an issue with that, they can probably uh, complain, but I don't think it will be, uh, they won't be able to do anything with it since you comply with the terms by entering the event. One more question, sorry. Uh, so maybe I missed, but uh, my question is uh, when do you trigger the, the server function? Oh, it's a good, uh, that's a good question. Yeah. yeah, very good question. Well, it's, uh, since we created this later, there's a manual trigger in the CMS. We use JDO CMS for it. Um, but uh, there's also a webhook, so when they create a new video, uh, after the video is triggered, it's completely converted because they also input their own files and then it gets converted as well with media convert. Uh, when that's done and they save the file, then it gets triggered and the information is automatically added. And also in the CMS in the preview, we also show the, the indicator of the uh, if this process is already done. And if so, you can automatically in the preview player see the, uh, the results. Yeah. And one more question. Is there any option for the future to give uh, users an option if there is a track ID? I know to give them possibility to, to suggest what is the Yeah, that is, that is an option we're looking into for, uh, for QNS Network. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not high on the roadmap, but yeah. it's, it's, it, it's, it is on the roadmap, but it won't happen anytime soon. Okay. All right. Thank you all for listening. And, uh,
see the guys from Cinetic in the back? <laughs> <laughs>